Okay guys, we're going to start this episode by basically making it so our character can hold a weapon, it will spawn on the character's hand, and depending on what weapon the character creates, we're going to actually change our character's animations for movement and idling and such and such. So I'm going to start off by making a script, I mean a folder rather, I'm just going to call it scripts, and I'm going to drag all of the scripts from the last few videos into here except for the player control script because that needs to sit where the player controls object is. I'm going to put the quick turn animation in the art folder. And I'm just going to check out my character's game object here and see where we're going to start. All right, let's minimize all that. All right, so let's start off by making a script. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to make a new C sharp script. We're going to call it item. This will serve as the base class for all of our items in the game. So every item that we make in the future will inherit from this class. So we got to ask ourselves here. We're going to start off by saying this is a scriptable object. What would an item need? So let's make a header. Let's make a title here. I'm just gonna call this item information. And what is something every item in your game will have? Well, it's gonna have a, uh, a name. So I'm just gonna make a public string for an item name. And it's gonna have a model. So make a public game object for an item model. And let's save that. So since we're specializing in the weapon items in this video and equipping them, we need to make a, another class. And let's call this weapon item. And we're going to make it inherit uh, from the base class of item, so it will get all of the variables that item has as well. So we're going to change mono behavior to item. And since this is item, we'll get everything that's over here on the item script. I'm going to erase the start and update function. And uh, I'm going to start off by just putting a variable here, or a header rather, first. And I'm going to call this weapon animation. And then I'm going to make a public variable for animator override controller. I'm going to call this weapon animator. And I'm going to save that. So we're basically going to give every weapon its own animator override, which is a fancy way of saying uh, it has its own animations that will replace animations in our default controller. It's very simple, and I'll show you how to do it. So first, let's go to the game object here. I'm just going to drag my input manager up here, uh, right below the anim animator manager, just for neatness sake. I'm going to make a new script called player equipment manager and this script will handle what the player currently has equipped and ready in terms of weapons and sub weapons etc etc so let's start off by erasing the start and update function again and just right on top here i'm going to make a header and the header is going to say current weapon actually let's say current equipment because that's a better title uh, because we'll have a weapon and a sub weapon in the future like a knife or a grenade and such so i'll make a public weapon item variable it's going to call weapon and then I'm going to put slash here, put some pseudocode for a public sub weapon uh, item, and it's going to call it sub weapon because we'll cover that in the future as well. And this will be, like I said, your knife or your stun grenades, et cetera, et cetera. And then down here, let's actually start by making a awake method and a start method. And we're going to utilize both of those. Um, okay, looks good so far. Now, we want to be able to equip this weapon to our character's hand. So, Let's make a private void. It's going to call this load current weapon. All right. Now, what are we going to do here? Let's think about this logically. So first, we load the weapon onto our player's hand. And then we change our player's animations, so our movement animations uh, and our idle animations, to the weapon's animations. Because, you know, when you're holding a shotgun, you're not going to move the same as if you were holding a pistol. Um, so we want to do that, too. So let's start with this part. We gotta load the weapon onto a player's hand. Well, that's pretty straightforward. We just need to make a script that spawns a weapon uh, on our character's hand. So let's actually make a script called weapon loader slot. And wherever we put this script, uh, that's where the weapon will instantiate. So in this case, since we're starting with equipment, we're gonna put it on our character's right hand. So let's start by making a few simple functions in this script that will handle loading it and instantiating it. So let's make a public game object. This will be the current weapon model. So this is the model of the weapon you want to instantiate that will appear on the character's hand. Let's make a private void for onload and destroy our current weapon model because every time you load a weapon, you want to make sure you destroy the previous one. Otherwise, you're going to get some weird looking things happening. So we're going to say if our current weapon model uh, does not equal null. So if we have one equipped, let's start right away by destroying that. And we'll destroy the current weapon model. And we're going to call this function on our next function every time, which we're going to make public. We're going to call it load weapon. 
model. And we're going to pass a weapon item for this. We're going to call it weapon. So to call this function, you need to make sure that you're giving it a weapon item. And then we're going to start by saying I load and destroy weapon. That way we're not equipping two at one time on accident. And we're going to say if weapon equals null. So if we don't have one, just return and do nothing. Uh, if the weapon item is not null, so you are passing a weapon through this, we're going to say game object weapon model equals instantiate as weapon dot item model because every item has a model as we stated before and the location will be the transform of the script and then we're going to say so this is just basically going to spawn the weapon model uh, at the location of this script then we're going to say weapon model dot transform dot local position is equal to vector 3.0 and then we're going to say weapon model dot transform dot local rotation equals quaternion identity and this is just a fancy way of saying like the weapon is whatever it, we have saved it as it's not going to be edited when we when we instantiate it onto our character's hand uh, and then we're going to say weapon model dot transform at local scale equals vector 3.1. So we're not messing with the scaling at all. We're going to make sure it is whatever we instantiate it as. And then we're going to say current weapon model equals weapon model. Okay. Excellent. Now, we need to put this on our character's hand or wherever we want to instantiate it. So we're going to do that. Let's open up our character here. And let's... Go down here and let's go to the spine. That's usually where it is. And the, down here in the shoulders, the elbow, and the hand. Now, if you want, you can make an empty game object under the hand and then put that script there. But I'm just going to place it right on top of the hand like that. Okay, so now let's go back into our player equipment manager and we got a call upon this now. So we, now we have our weapon loader slot. Let's call that weapon loader slot. Great. And we want to make sure we're calling that. So let's make a function for that because in the future we're going to have slots on our hips and our back so we can hold guns that we're not currently using but they'll still be on our player if you know what i mean like um, a pistol will rest on our player's hip and a shotgun will rest on our player's back so let's make a private void load weapon loader slots and then i'm just going to make some pseudo code here for the back slot and the hip slot and then we're going to actually load our our right hand slot right now which is uh, our main equipment slot so we'll say weapon loader slot equals get component in children weapon loader slot because it will rest in the game object of a child of this game object in the hierarchy and then on awake we'll start by saying web uh, just calling our function load weapon loader slots and then we're going to want to actually use it now so we can just say right here let's erase this and use actual code weapon loader slot dot load weapon model and we pass our weapon there we go just as easy as that Okay, so now the second part. This one's really easy as well. We need to call upon our animator manager that we already have in our character. Uh, so I'm just going to call that on awake. I'm going to say animator manager equals get component animator manager. And then we're going to use that to actually reference our animator. So I think we might have that private, so we'll see. Might have to make that public. So let's uh, basically come down here now. And we're going to say animator manager dot animator. And I think it's private. Yes, it is. Okay, so let's right click on animator manager and go to definition, animator public. We want to be able to reference the animator um, from any script via the animator manager. It's going to be the way we're going to get to it. So let's go back here now and let's say uh, dot animator. Then we're going to say dot runtime animator controller equals weapon dot weapon animator. And that's a fancy way of saying we're going to trade out our current animator controller for this new one that we have in the weapon. And then we're going to say load current weapon on start. So when we start the game, uh, make sure it's on start, not awake. We uh, are going to load the weapon we currently have in our hand. And it, it needs to be called after we obviously reference the weapon holder slot. So as you can see, we have human right now in our controller. If I go in here into the layers and base layer, you have, we have all of our locomotion animations. And this is all under the human controller. And, you know, we, we will do our idle animation and our movement, which is all well and good. So I'm going to create, right-click here, uh, scroll down, and you're going to see Animator Override Controller. And this is a really cool thing you can do because I'm just going to call it Pistol. What you do is you drag in the original animator. In our case, that's Human. And then you'll see all these animations here. You can actually replace any of the animations that you want. So you can call upon the same animation in code, but it will replace it with a different one. I'm going to replace Idle with Pistol Idle. And uh, that will do exactly what you think. When we start the game, our new idle will be uh, our pistol's idle. And if you have movement animations for your weapons, replace those as well. I just unfortunately don't right now. So I'm going to drag a weapon into the scene here now. Uh, just, uh, just a model. And we're going to set this up to be able to, for it to be used on our character. So what we want to do is create a game object under it, uh, an empty one. I'm just going to call this 
uh, weapon underscore Glock because I want to call it the same thing as the weapon. Uh, let's drag or make another empty game object, sorry, under this one. Um, and let's call this weapon transform. Make sure you unpack your other prefab if it's not done and then drag that prefab under the weapon transform. And you're thinking, well, Sebastian, why are we doing this? We're actually going to manipulate the weapon's rotation via the transform object. Um, okay. And I'll show you what I mean, because when we spawn this on our hand, it, the chances are it's not going to look right right away. So let's go to the weapon item and let's create asset menu up top here. And we can actually make it so we can reference this in the game. We're going to say menu name equals items slash weapon item. Uh, and let's, since we're referencing this from the base class item and the base class item is a scriptable object, we can now create this in the game. So if I go back here to the assets folder and I right click and create, it is not appearing for some reason. Let's try this again. Okay. No. Oh, I think I have an error. I must. Yep. There we go. I made a mistake. So I put two equal signs. Make sure you only have one. Now we can right click create items, weapon item. All right. I'm just going to call that pistol. And then what you want to do is put your newly created model in there under the model uh, variable and our weapon animator, put your pistol override animator. And now if we click on our character and drag that pistol into our current equipment weapon, when we start the game, as you will see, we will now be holding our gun. But as I just said, as you can see, it's not facing the right way. So that's easy. All we do is we click on the Glock or the pistol, whatever you have in your game, and we uh, click on the weapon transform. And then we edit this to however you want it to look. Make sure you're editing the weapon transform uh, game object and not the weapon itself. And then we can just drag that whatever way you want it to be. There we go. I'm just going to try to straighten up a little bit here so it looks a bit more dignified. But you can play with this as much as you want. And let's rotate it down a bit. And that looks good. Doesn't need to be too perfect right now for demonstration purposes, but I think that looks great. So right click on the transform here and copy component. Okay. And then go to your art uh, and wherever you save your weapon model game object, go to it and open it up. And then right click on the transform with the weapon transform highlighted, paste component values. And now when we start the game again, you will see that we are actually holding the weapon in proper form. So it still looks a little bit off because basically our right hand looks good, but our left hand doesn't look good. So what we're going to do in the next video is actually use Unity's uh, in-house hand IK system. And we're going to make it so the left hand or the off hand will always rest at the proper point of the weapon uh, when you're moving or not moving. So we're going to get into that. And we're going to also make sure the right hand is also resting perfectly. Now, if you guys did like this video, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to this Jing Lee Help My Series out. And if you're feeling super generous like a total champion, check out my Patreon below. I will see you guys in the next video where, again, we will expand upon our newly created equipment system. And we're going to make it so our hands will fit properly over the equipment that we equipped. And then once we get past that, we're going to get into shooting and such. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.